Hello. Uh, my name is Will. Uh, I'm happy to be here today uh, at the MIT Bitcoin Expo. It's an exciting event. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you about ZeroX Protocol, uh, an open protocol for low friction peer-to-peer -peer exchange on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, I wasn't really sure if this was going to be more like a, an academic conference or a, a presentation for computer science undergrads. So I structured this presentation as a little bit more high level uh, introduction to ZeroX and some of the, the ecosystem developments going on around it. Uh, just quickly, by show of hands, has anyone here uh, used a decentralized exchange in the past? So it looks like greater than 50%, uh, which is actually quite a bit larger percent than most presentations uh, I am attending. Let's see. So quick outline of this presentation. Uh, I'm going to provide a little bit of motivation and background uh, that went into the design for ZeroX protocol. I'm going to talk about existing work around decentralized exchange. Then we'll talk about some of the technical details around ZeroX protocol, the developer ecosystem that's formed in the last year or so. Uh, briefly talk about the need for governance. Uh, the second half of the presentation will discuss some new features that are going to be included in the second version of ZeroX protocol. Uh, and this will be one of the first times we've publicly talked about some of these new features. I'm excited about it. Uh, and then we'll, we'll go and, and provide a quick sneak peek of a new product that we're building called the ZeroX Trade Widget. Uh, so the world's value is becoming tokenized. In the past year or year and a half, uh, hundreds of tokens have emerged on the Ethereum blockchain. And uh, over the next few years, I think we'll just see a wide variety of different assets being tokenized on Ethereum. Uh, ranging from fiat currencies to tr traditional assets like stocks and bonds, uh, securities, uh, all the way to video game items, scarce digital goods like uh, licenses for software. All these things are eventually going to be converted or tokenized uh, onto blockchains such as Ethereum. Uh, and naturally, there will be a need to exchange all of these different tokens. Uh, so the exchange ecosystem, so, so just to preface, this slide is kind of the exchange ecosystem that existed back when we were first coming up with the idea for ZeroX protocol. And at the time, there were a handful of different decentralized exchanges that were already in existence. Uh, and there were a bunch of different decentralized applications that require exchange functionality in order to operate. So things like prediction markets, decentralized fund management platforms, stable coins, all of these different things require exchange functionality. The problem that we identified early on is that every single one of these different decentralized applications and decentralized exchanges were creating their own proprietary and custom smart contracts for exchange. Uh, and this uh, creates quite a few issues. First of all, since each different DAP was creating their own custom smart contract for exchange, um, every single DAP would have to bootstrap liquidity from scratch. Uh, and worse still, the end users of these exchanges would have to go through a variety of different uh, configuration processes, learning curves, and uh, they would have to expose their valuable digital assets to a variety of different smart contracts that may or may not be secure. Uh, and finally, there is no interoperability between any of these different exchange implementations. So our thesis is that smart contracts should act as modular building blocks that can be assembled and reconfigured. Uh, and we also believe that open standards tend to win out in the long run. Uh, so I'm going to briefly go through some of the high-level approaches that are used for decentralized exchange, uh, different approaches from ZeroX, and how we eventually arrived at uh, creating ZeroX in the way that we did. So the very earliest decentralized exchanges on the Ethereum blockchain kind of took the exchange functionality from a traditional centralized exchange and then tried to kind of 
port that directly into an Ethereum smart contract. So what you would end up having is this order book, a list of people offering to buy or sell digital assets uh, existing within an Ethereum smart contract. And what this means is that every single time you want to place, modify, or cancel an order, you have to create an Ethereum transaction, uh, which is expensive and it bloats the blockchain, and it doesn't necessarily result in any value being transferred. So this is not a very efficient approach. It's, it's not very good for a variety of different reasons. Uh, but I think, you know, from being, being practical, if you're a market maker, it's, it's completely uh, prohibitively expensive to market make using an on-chain order book. The second class of decentralized exchanges that people were experimenting with early on are called automated market makers. And the way that automated market makers work, instead of two parties uh, entering into a trade directly, uh, a buyer or a seller will trade directly with a smart contract. And the smart contract offers a spot price that will be modified deterministically according to some sort of curve that's programmed into that smart contract. Uh, and so the price that's offered by the automated market maker kind of adjusts according to market forces pushing the price up or down over time. Uh, issues with mar mar automated market makers include that um, they're very gameable and they're subject to front running. But I think the biggest issue uh, with automated market makers is that they cannot support large amounts of volume. Uh, and the reason why is because if you have someone that wants to sell a large chunk of some sort of asset and there's a buyer that would also like, that would like to act as a counterparty, instead of just doing a trade directly between those two parties, they must uh, go back and forth buying and selling through this automated market maker smart contract. Uh, pushing the price up and down, uh, back and forth. Uh, so that's not very efficient. Uh, one of the, uh, the last approaches to decentralized exchange that people were experimenting with early on uh, are, is using uh, this technology called state channels, uh, very similar to payment channels for those that are more comfortable with uh, Bitcoin terminology. Uh, and the way that state channels work is that you move some assets into this smart contract uh, that is locked up. Uh, you do a variety of different uh, transactions off of the blockchain. Uh, you can sort of sequence these transactions. You aggregate them into kind of a final state change. And then you dump that final state into the blockchain uh, and settle the state channel or close the state channel in a single transaction. Uh, so state channels could be good for uh, day trading or turn-based games uh, for gambling type applications. Uh, but state channels are not very good if you just have a big block of tokens that you just want to sell and be done with it. Uh, and the reason why is because there is quite a lot of friction involved with opening a state channel, ensuring that all the parties involved in the state channel are, are behaving honestly and uh, actually moving your uh, trade proceeds out of the state channel. Uh, and finally, one of, the, one of the downsides of using state channels for decentralized exchange is that once you kind of move your assets into this state channel that's off of the blockchain, off, uh, kind of isolated from the Ethereum blockchain, you isolate yourself from all the cool and interesting smart contracts that exist on the Ethereum blockchain. So ZeroX protocol uses a different approach called off-chain order relay with on-chain settlement. And uh, so ZeroX protocol, it, it basically consists of two different ingredients. The first ingredient is this uh, sort of order schema uh, that tells you how to arrange data into a packet uh, and signal your intent to enter into a trade. Uh, it contains details around uh, details related to the order you would like to enter into, such as the different assets that you would like to exchange, the exchange rate, the time that this uh, order uh, can remain, uh, remain um, the time to live. So at what point will this order no longer be valid? Uh, and the second part of Xerox protocol 
is a system of smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain that accept these cryptographically signed 0x orders and settle trades to the blockchain. Um, so, oh, and just to clarify, so a 0x order contains all of these order parameters. And finally, it contains a cryptographic signature that provides proof that you would like to enter into a trade. Uh, in, the, in the most simple form, the way to use Xerox protocol is you can create one of these cryptographically signed data packets saying, I would like to sell token X and receive token Y at this exchange rate. You cryptographically sign that data packet and you can just send it to your counterparty using any arbitrary communication channel. So you can send this cryptographically signed data packet to your counterparty using email or some sort of messaging app. Uh, you could even write it down on a piece of paper and mail it to your counterparty. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that the cryptographic signature is authentic. Uh, but naturally, people, you know, not everyone wants to do a manual over-the-counter trade. People want to go to a public location where uh, buyers and sellers' liquidity is being aggregated uh, into, say, the form of an order book. Uh, so this is where relayers come in to Xerox protocol. Uh, the message format contains a few other parameters. Uh, the fee recipient, which is just an Ethereum address, and then a maker fee and a taker fee. And uh, these parties that we call relayers can accept these cryptographically signed messages onto their order book and display them uh, and broadcast them to the public, essentially creating a marketplace. Uh, in exchange for offering this service, they can charge transaction fees on each trade that is uh, settled through that relayer. Um, so well, another interesting thing is that there's a few different ways that relayers can operate. Uh, the simplest way that a relayer might operate is by hosting what we call an open order book which is similar to, say, an Ether Delta, where this relayer has a database. Uh, buyers and sellers send these cryptographically signed orders to the relayer. The relayer checks that there is a fee that will be paid out to them upon settlement of a trade. And uh, anyone, it's kind of a post-it board where anyone can kind of post this order up to their order book, and anyone else can see an order on that order book, take it off, and inject it into the Xerox smart contracts settling a trade. A second way that Xerox protocol can be used and that we've seen uh, in production today uh, is using what we call an order matching strategy. So a relayer will only accept orders onto their order book if they are specified as the only entity that's able to inject that order into the Xerox smart contract. And what, the, what this matcher will do is they'll wait until they get an order on either side of a market that are uh, at the same exchange rate or overlapping in price. And what they will do is they will package those two orders together and they will batch fill them uh, synchronously and atomically in a single transaction uh, using the Xerox smart contracts. And in that way they can provide sort of a, uh, an order matching service and they can prevent things like front running uh, and trade collisions. Uh, so those are just a couple of different ways that Xerox protocol can be used but we intentionally uh, do not specify a best way of using 0x, and we encourage the people in our ecosystem building on 0x to experiment with their own approaches. Uh, in, in case I didn't make this clear already, these orders exist off of the blockchain. So it, it's just a chunk of data that's floating around anywhere that's not touching the blockchain at all, and this packet of data is injected into a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain, and a single transaction occurs only at the time that a trade is actually being settled between two parties. So it's much more efficient. Uh, so why create an open standard rather than having a bunch of different implementations that um, are custom and proprietary? Well, there's quite a few different reasons, but I think the most obvious reason is that when all of these different exchanges are speaking the same language, you can create a global network of interconnected exchanges, marketplaces, and dApps. Uh, and it allows them to seamlessly pool liquidity and share liquidity. Um, 
It also allows for more robust and standardized developer tools. So ZeroX, the ZeroX team has created the ZeroX JavaScript library uh, and the standard Relayer API. And these tools make it very easy for anyone to very quickly spin up their own decentralized exchange. Uh, and it takes a lot of that upfront uh, work out of the equation. Oh, three minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna very quickly go through some of the developer ecosystem uh, progress we've seen. We launched in August on the mainnet. Uh, since then, there's been an explosion of developer activity, uh, upwards of 12 different teams building relayers. Uh, here's a few of them pictured. Uh, the first one, Kin Alpha, uh, was the first relayer to go on the live on the mainnet. It was created by a single developer in their spare time over the course of a few weeks. Uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired in terms of the user experience, but it's very impressive that a single person was able to create this uh, with, and they had a full-time job and everything. Uh, the first relayer to go into, to go live on the mainnet and see adoption is Radar Relay. Uh, it's really awesome. Decentralized Exchange uses the open order book model. I would encourage you to check it out to, uh, if you're interested in uh, trying out one of these relayers. Uh, they're doing a pretty significant amount of volume every day now. Uh, third is Paradex. Uh, they launched late last year. They're using an order matching strategy uh, and they have a really beautiful user interface. And because they're using this order matching strategy, it feels very low latency. Uh, there's a variety of different trade explorers that have been independently developed as well uh, that you can go and check out, you know, check out all of the trading activity that's going through ZeroX protocol. Uh, just some quick usage metrics. Um, we launched in August. We're slowly seeing some uh, volume start to go through the system. Uh, right now, I think the relayers and the Xerox core team are focusing on building tools for market makers, which will significantly increase the volume uh, going through Xerox protocol. And uh, just by kind of checking the smart contracts, there are approximately a thousand people that uh, have, are transacting using ZeroX protocol over the last month. Uh, really quickly, gonna go over some features that are coming in version two that we're working on today and that will be released in June. Uh, ZeroX protocol version two is gonna support any digital asset or future token standard that may emerge on the Ethereum blockchain. So what this means is that you will be able to trade any of the thousands of ERC-20 tokens that exist today or will in the future you'll be able to exchange any uh, non-fungible token, crypto kitty, video game item, what have you. You'll be able to trade any digital asset. You'll be able to exchange ownership of a smart contract itself. Uh, so you'll be able to buy and sell Ethereum name service names. Uh, second, Solidity ABI V2 is a new experimental feature in the Solidity programming language that allows us to pass structured data between smart contracts and it creates a very simple and beautiful smart contract uh, API, uh, which will make it very easy for independent developers to seamlessly integrate their own smart contracts into Xerox protocol. Uh, lastly, Xerox protocol version two is going to include signature generalization. And what this means is that you will be able to sign human readable structured data. So, uh, the ZeroX message format includes a bunch of different parameters associated with the trade you would like to enter into, and you hash all of those parameters and you sign that hash to create a cryptographic signature. Today, if you're signing one of these ZeroX orders, you see this big scary message that says, be very careful when signing anything with your private key, and you see this uh, ZeroX order hash. Uh, in the future, using signature generalization and this new proposal that we've put forth, you will be able to visually inspect what exactly are you signing. Uh, another uh, nice benefit with signature generalization is that there will be more wallet options. Today you can trade from your Ledger hardware wallet. In the future you'll be able to trade from your Trezor and other wallets as well. Uh, lastly, uh, really excited to announce the ZeroX trade widget, uh, which is going to be released with version two of ZeroX protocol. Uh, it will allow for one click instant purchases of tokens. Uh, it will not require any configuration or account setup. And how it will work, 
Uh, you can embed this in your website. You can provide liquidity yourself, but if you don't want to, you can pull liquidity from all these open order book relayers, uh, inject that liquidity into the widget, and people can hit the bid or hit the ask uh, to instantly purchase tokens or NFT, uh, NF NFTs. So we're very excited to be releasing these new features. We're aiming to launch version two in June. And uh, I appreciate your uh, attention. Thank you very much.